What's going on YouTube? It's for Spooks. I want to thank you so very much for checking out this video. Now, in today's video we're going to be talking about is, is Dead by Daylight in trouble because of the recent release of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game? Now, a lot of big time content creators for Dead by Daylight, including a pretty good majority of the Fog Whisperers that I've seen, or at least the ones that I do follow, have actually moved over and been playing a lot more of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre than they have been with Dead by Daylight. For instance, um, big creators like Spooky Loops, even my personal favorite, which is Ghost Arcade, and even the top dog himself, Ots Tavares, and his community has been obviously with him. Now, like Spooky Loop has said, only the only thing that these two games have in common is the fact that they are both in the asymmetrical genre of game. Now, I myself have been playing a lot more of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre than I have been Dead by Daylight, and that's just because I was honestly getting really burnt out of Dead by Daylight, and the game just wasn't really fun for me at this point in time, and that's why you haven't seen that much content with Dead by Daylight, which more is coming soon. It's just I needed to step, take a step back because I was honestly feeling burnout big time and honestly just not having fun with Dead by Daylight at all. Now, with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, for those that do not know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released earlier this month. A lot of players have been finding it a lot, kind of like a nice, a fresh breath of air whenever it comes to this style of gameplay. Now, the two biggest differences, obviously, between Dead by Daylight and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is Dead by Daylight. It's pretty straightforward. If you're a survivor, you do five generators, you power on the exit gates, and you leave and try not to die. And as the killer, you try to prevent this from happening. And of course, you know, obviously getting into chases and stuff like that is a lot of fun with Dead by Daylight. I mean, come on, it's the top dog whenever, it's, whenever it comes to asymmetrical, there's hands down. But in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you get, it's more, instead of a 4v1 like Dead by Daylight, you get a 3v4, you got three family members, and then three victims, as they're called, not survivors, in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, everyone in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they start at the basement, and of course, you have to try to make your way out of the basement without you know, while you wake up grandpa, etc. His main objective is to put as much pressure on the survivors or the victims as fast as humanly possible before they exit Bubba's lair or the basement. And then the other family members of above in that are not in the basement, like, like the cook, etc., and other family members, their job is to put as much pressure and to try to trap and cut off certain key areas of the survivor. But of course, if you want to see any gameplay of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on this channel, let me know in the comments below if you want to see the something like that. And see, I myself, because I've seen a lot of people ask, uh, do you think Texas Chainsaw Massacre is better than Dead by Daylight? Do you think, you know, it's going to dethrone Dead by Daylight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in my honest opinion, I don't think so. Now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a great and fun game, but I guess it's kind of too early to tell to really say that Dead by Daylight is in trouble because of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. Because there's been other asymmetrical horror games in the past that tried to take or dethrone Dead by Daylight and have failed miserably. Now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I will definitely agree, is not by any means one of those games. Now, even with those big heavy hitters of the Dead by Daylight community playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, according to StreamCharts.com, Dead by Daylight has still retained a player base of 36,700 players within the last 30 days and at the time of recording this video. Compared to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, averaging a little over 11,000 players since launch. Now, of course, Dead by Daylight has been around for much, much longer than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And to be honest, I've been having a lot of fun with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think it's just a nice kind of a breath of fresh air whenever it comes to this style of gaming that we actually all enjoy. Now, I will give you, I will say this about Dead by Daylight is if you're a new player, or you haven't played it in a long time, you, you basically understand what you gotta do. In Dead by Daylight, there's five generators if you play a survivor that you have to power on, get to the exit gates, open the exit gates, and leave, and try to avoid the, the other character, because YouTube doesn't like that word, the entity's helper, we'll call him that. And of course, if you are the entity's helper, your job is to stop that from happening and to put them on hooks and give them to the entity. Now with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it was a lot more complicated and a lot more to get used to, I guess, if you will, because I, I'll, let me, I'm going to be completely honest. Whenever I got into Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I didn't give a crap about the, to the tutorials. I didn't care. I just wanted to get in the game, play it, have fun, see what would happen. And I will admit that it was actually kind of big, a bit of a learning curve because I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I had no idea even playing as a family member. I had no idea what I was doing, but eventually as, as I played the game more and more, the more I understood and the less... I guess, overall complicated as it got and ended up being a ton of fun. But I had no idea what I was doing when I first started playing. Now with Dead by Daylight, it was just kind of like a, a basic rundown from a friend. It was like, you do this, you do that. That's it. 
pretty easy to understand. Of course, the whole looping mechanics and stuff like that just came with over time. And let's also get into the fact that a lot of people have also been saying that Dead by Daylight is way too toxic. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. I can count on one hand how many times I've actually run into a legit toxic person. And I'm not talking about those that like click flashlights and teabag at you. Of course, yeah, I guess that could be considered toxic. But I'm talking like post game chat to where they're just like, you know, GG, bro, get good, you know, or not even GG, like, get good, you suck, wow, blah, 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 go back to playing Fortnite or something like that. Now, I'll admit that I have actually gotten upset at Dead by Daylight. I mean, I don't I don't think anybody that actually plays video games has not gotten upset at that said game. To be fair, just like maybe you shouldn't be playing the game at that point because you're just not in the right mindset to have fun. But I digress. I normally get mad at the game, you know, from like, stupid like how did they hit me through a wall sort of thing because of the lag compensation and stuff like that never really the player's fault it's just like what the heck's going on or the blatant hackers i never really ran into most of those because i'm still kind of a smaller creator so i didn't really run into that problem like the bigger guys did but i'm always trying to be the more positive person i try to you know see the game in a different light i try to be that that beam of light in that so-called toxic community and even if people are toxic to me, I'm not toxic back to them. And I understand that, yeah, there's some times where I'm just like, wow, man, okay, well, maybe he was having a bad day or whatever. Even whenever I get absolutely destroyed by survivors because I am an entity helper's main, any time that I get just destroyed by survivors, which it happens, it happens quite a lot because there are some amazing survivors in this game. I still are like, wow, you guys played amazing. Good job. You know, that was awesome looping. I wish I could play Survivor that well. 99% of the time I get met with the same thing like, hey, you did great too. You know, good job. You scared the crap out of us, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. Then, of course, every once in a while you get those people that are like, wow, you suck, dude. Stop playing the game, whatever. You know, it's whatever. It's one guy out of a hundred players or a hundred matches it's very rare that i come in contact with very toxic people to sum it up if you are toxic to people people will be toxic to you if you're a jerk to people people will be jerk to you i have experienced that i've been nice to people they've been nice back it, it's it's crazy how that works right anyway i'm kind of getting off subject here that's just my little spiel i wanted to say about the whole addressing the toxicity issue with dead by daylight now getting back on topic i have actually you know what's really nice is you actually have voice chat in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is really nice. In Dead by Daylight, that is not a factor unless you're playing like Survival Friends and you're all in a Discord call or something. Whereas in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you can have open communications. Now, I've been streaming on Twitch for 10 years now. If you'd like to go check that out, link's right here. I also stream on Kick every once in a while. Here, that's more your jam. Check out up here. But from what I have noticed from past experiences with open game chat lobby, I actually had to turn that off, which I'm glad that they have that option, just because I am afraid that someone is going to say something stupid, go to your channel, report it, and then you, you know, 10 years down the drain, gone, because some idiot was just being a troll, right? Now, a lot of people haven't done this, and they actually, it makes for great content, not going to lie, but stuff like that, I just am really careful about. Now, if I could only imagine what would happen if Dead by Daylight were to implement any kind of in-game chat, especially like proximity chat. It'd be hilarious. Maybe borderline nightmarish. But with all that said, with the release of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre being such a huge success in the asymmetrical horror genre, and with new characters coming to the game for family and as well as victims, and of course there's some rumored new maps that might be dropping for the game as well, so the Texas Chainsaw Massacre may retain a pretty good majority of the Dead by Daylight player base. But time will tell. And let's not forget because arguably the most anticipated chapter or release for Dead by Daylight is, of course, the tw the chapter 29, which is the alien chapter. That's going to be releasing Ripley as a survivor and the Xenomorph as the entity's helper. And that is coming out actually tomorrow. So if that's your jam, and honestly, I've been excited for the alien to come. And if you would like to see gameplay of the alien, I'll have a link in a card up here for you. If you want to go check that out after you finish watching this video. So releasing of the alien chapter, do you think that a lot of the former players of Dead by Daylight that have actually moved to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, do you think they're actually going to come back for the Xenomorph? And if so, how long do you think that'll be? Do you think they'll just grind out Xenomorph and Ripley just to get their perks and just see what fun builds they can do and then go back to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Or do you think that with the release of the Alien chapter that it'll actually retain 
a vast majority of the player base that it did lose to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Or do you think the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is just that shiny new toy that they get for Christmas and then it's shelved after about a week? And do you think yourself that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre could actually dethrone Dead by Daylight as the top dog for the asymmetrical horror genre? Or do you think it might just play out the same way that like the failed asymmetrical horror genres have in the past? Like the Evil Dead game, for example, that one kind of fell flat on its face. People played it for a little bit and then it just kind of fizzled out. I don't even know anybody that plays it anymore. Let me know if you do down in the comments. As well as the biggest failure, I think, was probably VHS or Video Horror Society, I think is what they ended up calling it. And then last year. Last year, I was actually had high hopes for, but they just, it just, what happened to it? I don't even know. Or do you think that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre actually is going to play a big part of the asymmetrical horror genre and actually going to be another state that and i would honestly like to see that happen that way you know players could bounce between back and forth between dead by daylight and the texas chainsaw massacre so do you think the texas chainsaw massacre is here to stay or will it be shelved just like the other asymmetrical horror genres and then dead by daylight will just continue being what dead by daylight is but that's all i have for now guys uh i thank you so much for being here now there'll be more dead by daylight videos to come very soon so be sure if you've if you made it this far, leave a like on the video, subscribe for more content, and I'll, I'll see you in the fog. Have a great day, guys.